Hello you guys and welcome to the first video in us getting ready to junk journal our Christmas. So basically I'm going to show you how to de uh, how to construct two different types of journals using your little golden book. And so these are two that I have used in the past. This is one I'm going to show how to do the rings. The rings is really one of the most easiest ways um, to actually deconstruct, to deconstruct and create your journal and then um, I also want to show you guys which I've showed you before in my recent um, video on how to make my creative daily journal we're going to be actually sewing in um, a signature now um, so the tools that I'm going to be using today is um, I'm not going to be using my crop it out but I wanted to show this is typically what everybody has when they're creating with uh, junk journals t in order to to punch into the thicker um, journal covers um, because a regular uh, punch would not work like this this isn't going to work for those um, for those pages um, now if you're going to be making where you sew in you don't have to worry about having one of these I bought this um, off Amazon you can also buy it like if you have like a resale shop that sells office stuff. I've gone to one um, here in Austin and I kid you not they probably had about 50 of these <laughs> ready to go like for you know not very much at all. The next thing is you're going to need a, a staple remover um, which is very handy. You don't have to have it. There's other things you can use for a staple remover and then of course I use my bone folder. So let's go ahead and get after it shall we say and let me show you guys how I'm, I would create a um, using binding so basically um, I take a book in this case I'm going to be taking a little golden book if you got a kit everybody got a um, one of these cute little books in there and you're basically going to be taking out the spine the spine completely. So I'm going to go ahead and I've gotten some papers here too that I was going to show you guys um, how I cut it. Um, again, this is just real bare bones getting your journal ready to go um, video. So basically what I do is I take the book and I'm going to literally just pull the, uh, pull the spine apart. Now, the older the books, the heavier duty the staples are. The newer the books, it's pretty easy to just um, tear apart. So, again, you can see that they usually have two staples in there. <clears throat> now, a lot of times what I can do is I'll, um, I'll rip the papers off as well. And that kind of helps, like for example... This is where that staple puller is going to come in handy. If the paper does want to work with you, then I can just go in there and like work with this and pull that off. Now, if you're doing a, um, if you're doing a, a journal that is going to be with the rings, it doesn't matter about. Um, destruct destroying that spine because <laughs> you're going to be cutting that spine off anyway now if you're going to be doing the signature in there and sewing you want to kind of protect that spine because you're going to be using it so this is what it ends up looking like now typically there's this is all together hmm oh well that works out perfect a lot of times there'll be two different signatures that fold together to make up the book but this one is just one in general which is really nice for if you were going to be doing a sewing of the spine but in this case the reason I say that is because like I'll show you the book that I'm going to do in a minute um, I couldn't keep it in order because it was two signatures and I wanted to have that fold in it because I'm going to be actually using the pages but in this case we're going to be cutting that off anyway so as you can see we still have those scary staples in there yes they are scary because they're very heavy duty but we're going to be cutting those off so let me get my paper cutter over here now you don't have to have one of these but I, I don't know if I can fit all of this on my desk 
but um, as you can tell I'm still a hot mess on my desk I am gonna be I hope I hope I can get it done but I wanted to like get started on these videos so because um, I'm hoping everybody if you ordered a kit you you already have it and you can start playing along so um, let's pull these sleeves up and get after it so okay so we have this we're gonna cut off the spine because we're, we do not need it for the, the rings. And so I literally, are, I'm just gonna follow that guide with this and, and keep it just like that. And that's, that is it, I'm just gonna cut that spine off. And these books covers are so nice. There you have it, you've got your two book covers. Now what you'll notice is when you cut your spine off, your pages stick qu out quite a bit. So what I like to do, that's when I like to come in and have the two signatures, but since we don't have them, I'm just gonna open it up, put that aside, and then kind of just measure this. Um, I, You can tell I have a lot of markings on mine because that's how I measure things. So I kind of measure where it was at. I'm gonna cut this side off the other one where was that at see I have to I want to make sure I got it right okay so it was on 15 and a half 15 and a half reindeer games <laughs> okay and then voila there you have it it's all fitting nicely in there so this is where I would go ahead and start like adding papers in. So I'm not going to do my whole edition. Now what I've learned over the many years that I've been doing this, let's show, let's bring out our Nutcracker one again. I add so much as I go along in these pages that sometimes I like to hold off on adding, this one's like really to the brim. Um, I like to hold off on adding really too much in there because a lot of times like this for instance is a card this is where you can start really junking it up this is a vintage card this is day three and I tell the story inside the card and then I actually used a book page I love this but this is one of my favorite books Twas the Night Before Christmas and if you look close at the artwork it's so cool it's all like pen it's color but it also the detail is the pen the pen work so um, Oh, uh, President um, Bush passed away on the 5th. So, so as I go along, I'm adding different elements to, um, to my pages. So um, that is something to keep in mind as you're going along instead of like putting a bunch of papers in at one time, unless you're going to be literally like numbering each one. But a lot of the times I'm not lots of glitter on their faces um i'm not sure what exactly i'm going to put in here for example this is actually the brochure from the girl scouts going to this particular event so yeah so you can fill it in as much as you want this one i knew we were going to the nutcracker and so it's actually a magazine page from daphne's diary this is like some sparkle in there because we went and saw the nutcracker so, so yeah, just kind of keep that in mind that as you're going to be filling up your pages um, with all your memories that you will be um, um, I love that. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you all a story real quick. Just in case you weren't here for this, because um, I know I probably did a lot of these pages or talked about or did a flip through of this, but my I actually did a... Um, uh, page I like to always include like a memory in, in my books and um, there's one of my mom where she dressed up as an angel and I actually had her write the story so where did that go here it is so I love this if you um, I have a piece of artwork that's in stickers called hark and that's that's where this came from but I had I had her write out the story and then I also had my dad write out a story as well um, about a memory 
um, I asked my so I asked my parents to write a story on an index card about their favorite childhood memory, Christmas memory. I love their story. So they each had um, a different story that I put in here. So anyway, sorry, I know that's off topic, but um, again, you know the index card. I wanted to add pictures, so don't don't worry about quickly filling your book up because uh, if you're going to be doing this daily, um, then you're definitely going to have lots of time lots of pages to fill up so where were we at we were at 15 and a half right here wait I think we were at 15 and a half and again they don't have to be perfect and at 20 so there you have it you have your first little page that can go into your book and this works great because we are going to be doing like a little introduction um, to our journal so once you have those in place um, let me move this and we'll finish creating our book moving this over here and again keep in mind you can do different different like even if you wanted to include this in or you wanted to include this little small one in there's all these different um, sizes that you can definitely include in your journal as you go along okay so now that we have this done this is where this is really handy um there is i think they were like six dollars on amazon i'll leave a link below to where i bought that at and basically what i do is i guesstimate so looking at this I might move it out just a tad bit um, but just so it kind of is in the middle if you are perfectionist do measure that out because if from my eye back here it looks like it could be moved out a little bit more so I'm gonna call that good what's great is you have that guide and then I'm just gonna punch and then what's really cool is you take this, you use that guide again, and you punch. So what's handy about that is although if you have your crop dial, this works great too, but you're measuring up and this one, I love it because you already have your guide on there and you're able to punch your two holes. So that is why I love this thing. This is like my new favorite thing to make ring um, journals with it. So, and then it also really like does a lot of pages at one time. So literally I'm going to do all of these, all the books that were in there in that page we just cut. I'm going to line it up with the guide. Voila. Now tell me if that's not like taking care of business. <laughs> so it should line up, which it does. Yay. And then um, I've got some binding rings, which Amazon, of course, is a great place, but of course there's always some at Walmart at your even at Dollar Tree they have them um, at anywhere pretty much office supplies and then you just bind it up like that and of course as your book gets fluffier and fluffier you can add more thicker rings if needed and the and the fun thing about these rings is you can doll them up as well and we're going to be doing that um, later but there you have it your first little book and now it's all it's got its little rings and it's so pretty so yeah that's that's one way to do these okay so moving into the next way which I know if you guys have been following me, I think I just made that because I'm i looking at my autumn journal as well. So the next way that um, that I just recently started doing, which this takes the sewing kit. So um, if you guys, I'll leave a link below. I've left this in that last video I made, but I'll go ahead and leave the link below. This is one that I've worked with. I actually put in two signatures. And what I did for the signatures is I actually used... I made journals on this side and then I used this journal by Loveland's Life um, and basically 
I made I took it apart and I made it into a journal by a junk journal by adding different papers in there so that's kind of what we're gonna do with this one um, but instead of having the two signatures the two little journals included I'm only going to be doing one journal so um, this is the journal I selected now I know it's not Christmas themed um, because since when I made this journal, I really wanted to do something that was um, more and less uh, that I could use later in the next year because this is like my everyday journal, like just my personal journal, not not the daily um, creative daily journal. I don't work in this. I mean, I don't write in this one all the time, but I do write in it. This is more um, like a personal journal. So basically, um, I thought, well, I might as well just make one for later in the year to have and so it's not exactly Christmas themed but it's definitely one that I can use in latter year later in the year <sighs> okay <laughs> um, so the issue with this one is I, it I didn't realize when I was doing this this would have been a great one for making into a ring binder because the artwork on this one it goes right up to the edge um, look at like her sweet little face here right up to the edge so if I was to cut like I did in the last one I would cut off her sweet face and, and a lot of the artwork is on the edges like look at this cute little dog and stuff so I look at her face right here I would have to cut that off in order to use it as like this journal so I decided that I'm okay with it sticking off the edges like this I can always come in and trim, but as I do in most of my journals, I end up adding trim on the outside, so it's going to make it more um, thick anyway. But if you notice, these journals, all my journals end up having so much fluff that comes out on the outside anyway. So I am perfectly fine with it overhanging. So this is what how I make mine. So um, now remember when we took apart the book... We, we like took apart we in this case I took out the staples you can tell I kind of ripped the staples to pieces here but I I kept this the spine intact I did not tear it apart like I did in the other book where I you know ripped it out so I almost did look at it, it took a while this was an older book and so it was a little bit more meaner I call them meaner staples <laughs> they're vicious <laughs> but they're more like a stronger staple so they are literally like yeah pretty strong um, do not want to poke yourself with them so what I like to do is I save up this really this is some heavy-duty <laughs> you know crafting material here it's an old rice container and the reason I do this is because I use it to kind of reinforce the spine. So literally, I'm going to mark this up, get a pencil, and I'm just going to kind of like guesstimate. Again, if you want to, to um, if you want to measure, feel free. But I'm just gonna cut this like this because basically what I'm doing is I'm just reinforcing the spine that's already there and a lot of times um, because I'm going to be sewing within this spine so you want to kind of um, make it strong to hold your binding now this yeah I you know it could possibly hold it but since it has that real thin part in there I, I wouldn't want to trust it so so we're going to get some glue here and we're going to glue it down and I again I just use my glue stick because I'm going to be reinforcing this thing with with um, with tape with um, all kind of I'm going to be reinforcing this I'm just trying to decide if it's going to be you guys look at this this is another glue stick that is not working and you remember I threw the other one away so because I was like okay I'm tired of like trying to use it and it's not working and this is in that same batch um, 
but I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just basically you're building up that spine. Now there is a really good glue and I do have some. It is called And I see a lot of this is actually a professional book binding glue and it it does do the trick of gluing. But again, you could probably even use just any kind of regular um, white glue to just reinforce that spine. Okay. Now what I've done in the past is I've, um, I have literally, um, added masking tape over this and then I come in but what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and come in and cover this up and I'm going to use like a thinner paper and actually I have this really nice I think this is rifle paper um, yeah, Rifle Garden Party, and I'm going to use this because I, I have found this in my stash recently, but you can use regular, um, uh, you could actually even use wrapping paper, you could use um, cardstock, and again, I'm just going to cut and not measure. Let's move this glue out of the way here. And that gives, while I'm cutting, that gives that an opportunity to dry. And what's nice is what's, if you're going to do this for your Christmas journal, um, what's nice is you can use like wrapping paper. I had, I bought, I got a ton of wrapping paper. Uh, vintage wrapping paper from a thrift store last year that I, I'm still using and I love I love using that and then also you can use um, you can use tissue paper it's just basically kind of creating a reinforcement even though tissue paper may be a little thin um, but it would still work so I'm just going to go ahead let me get another glue stick that one is not functioning. Correctly. This one's almost out. Yeah, that I can already feel that. It's already dry. Like a lot of times, um, and I know you guys all have your favorite glue that you use, but I can tell that it's like not moist like I was afraid that cardboard was going to stay you guys me and my glue sticks <laughs> ah. And the thing with this thick, thinner paper, I'm talking about like that, the paper I'm about to um, put down, is it really is, um, if you're, unlike cardstock, you know, that can be kind of um, hard to adhere. I'm going to use my roller. If you don't have a roller, don't worry, you can always use your hands. Or you can use your, um, a ruler works really good for this as well. But I'm just kind of going to put that down there. Okay. Now let's see where we're at. So we're going to, we're going to fold our spine. But I'm going to come in and trim this off.
I think one of my favorite things is to like get creative and make all kind of journals, you know, it's just fun to put them together and um, there's so many different ways you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to fold that in here. Let's go ahead and crease that down the middle like that. See how it's making a more secure spine and it makes it a little bit thicker like so and then we're going to add our signature in there and again it's going to leave a lot of room for growth when you start filling this up so the key is is try to get it stuck get it put in the middle as best we can Get our little clips out. Sorry for the reach. Oops, ow, I clipped my whole finger down. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> okay, now comes the sewing part. And like I said, this one does take a little bit longer. There's pros and cons to every type of journal, I feel like. Like this one, once you have the pages in, it's a done deal. Unlike the rings, you can add papers in there. That's one of the reasons I do like doing the ring for... Um, for Christmas because I'm always picking up different kind of brochures and things for events that we go to. If you guys have been following, you've seen me use this before, but if not, I will leave this posted. This is a really inexpensive um, book binding kit that you can find on Amazon. And I tell you what, this this I have done classes and stuff, and this wax has lasted me making up many, many journals. So, I might have got too much wax, actually, to be honest with you. It's, I say wax, but it's um, wax. Um, it is wax. String. surgeon is in. We're ready to do our surgery on here. So I am going to do my three holes and then we're going to sew those three holes. So I do one in the middle and one and really and truly I'm going to do the best I can to get that in the middle. But I'm not going to lose sleep over it if it's a little off. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do one here. Maybe I should have done it in the, maybe I should have done it on the inside first. We're going to punch it through just like that. Pretty close to where I was. And then I'm just estimating. Be careful not to poke your hand on the other side. Yeah, and this is not, it's not definitely in the middle, but it works. So we've punched three holes. And we're going to come in here and sew it. And you guys, I used to be scared of this technique. I mean, it's crazy that I was scared of this technique. But I was. I was just like, oh, I guess I can't do that. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. And it was, and it's actually one of, now I'm like, I don't know why, that, why I was so fretting about it. So 
I like to have my strings on the inside of my journal so I come through and but if you want to have them on the outside you can and then you just bring you basically go in and you're bringing your string out of the the back side of the the spine and then you're going to bring it up to the next hole and hope that we can find it <laughs> And hope that we can find it. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. Okay. We may have to be look for it through the book. There we go. Come on. Sometimes this works easy and then sometimes it wants to be difficult. It's almost there. Sometimes you have to like baby baby it through. Like kind of open the book pages up and say, come on, there you go, you got it, there we go. So we're going to bring it down. We're going to sew it all the way to the edge here. We're going to go across the middle again. We're going to go through the hole. And this one is a lot easier, right? Right? Let's see it. I think that's it. It is like, let's see. Sometimes I just need to take a deep breath and relax. And it will go through there. What in the world? Oh. I was trying to force it through somewhere that there wasn't a hole. Okay. And then I bring it back up. And then I'm going to bring it back through the middle one. And sometimes this is tricky too because that string wants to, to divide it. And you're like, no, no, we don't want you to go through the string. I'm going to open it up and see. Okay. Ta-da! Okay, now take the clips off and we can kind of like tighten things up. Let's put that needle away. Yeah, I got way too much string, which I'll save it because I could create a smaller journal and use it there because I hate to waste it. Okay, so I like to make sure the string is, before I tie it, is on both sides and Make sure everything's tightened. The book isn't like crazy feeling. Are you crazy feeling? <laughs> you know, like really like loose. I don't want to make sure it's not loose. Save the string. Okay, let's tie. Yeah, see that, that string was kind of loose. And I like to tie around that string. It kind of adds a little bit more reinforcement. Ta-da! And then you can always trim it. And there you have it. You're, you have sewn in a signature. And I have to say I'm pretty impressed that it's in the middle with all that fighting we did. <laughs> okay, now the last step is, oh, and look, see how pretty it is on the inside, you guys? It's so pretty. I like to, I myself like to add a finishing touch. You could do material. You could do more scrapbook paper, like more if you wanted to do this and edge it out. Um, I've done that before. Material works out great too, but since I have my binding tape that I like to use on a lot of my journals, I'm just going to use this. And again, this has lasted me so long. Um, I got it on Amazon as well too. Typically, I should start in the middle, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. Meaning, like, put it down the middle first, and then on the edges, 
but I knew this was probably going to not be that wide. Trim off that edge there. Whoops. Okay. So there you have it. It's ready to go as a journal. And I always add my paper, my little ties here to tie it close. Um, now I did want to go into one more thing. Um, as I mentioned um, earlier, is this is the journal that I plan to use for my daughter. I keep saying for my daughter, but this is she wanted a standalone journal versus my daily creative journal, which I'm going to be including on my um, still keeping up with my daily dis daily journal things throughout that um, throughout the altered composition book. So with this one, and how I'm going to be all adding my um, pages is I'm going to be just literally adding this inside here. throughout the um, throughout the pages and um, I am going to be doing a video on my cover creating a cover for this um, I thought about I really really wanted to try to use the cover to this book and kind of tear it apart and put it on here but uh, like tear off that first layer but I may actually do like some sort of collage work with this one so I will come back and do another video on the cover for this journal um, and we love this 12 days of Christmas but I also have something else I want to show you guys this was another thing that I got in a happy mail last year and we are doing kind of a ginger man theme. We kind of have little themes throughout the year we still use this we might add little things but we make um, we kind of like have certain things that are uh, like if we do nutcrackers or little houses or something we'll do like centerpieces with that but I want to do gingerbread men this year so I got this in a happy mail and I was thinking earlier I'm like that would look really cute if I added something like this on the outside using these two elements that I got in a happy mail because I'm using a stash and this was part of my stash so this may be the idea that I go with um, and then I could also do like a kind of a painted background so I'll come back and do another video on that but I just wanted to show you guys if you wanted to strictly use your little golden books um, I got two examples here that you can put it, put them together and assemble them this way um, and then we'll come back and work on our covers and you know what if you if you didn't want to keep your little golden book cover you could paint this too I mean you could you put what I would do is like put a um, white base down but of course the covers are so cute right but if you wanted to change your cover up at all or make it like a um, more of a um, you know do your own design you could definitely add white paint and then be able to design it that way or glue you know if you didn't want if you weren't going to go with paint and you wanted to glue material you could glue material uh, you could do collage work on it um, if you did you know I would kind of like try to sand it down maybe with the fingernail file or something like that I because it is that shiny but I think I really am the more I like now that I've like put it together because I haven't actually put it like on here I'm really liking that. That looks so cute. And this is just a cute little ornament, hand, all handmade. I love this, like, handmade um, things. And this is too. And it's it's got this um, wax paper on it. But I think it would be so cute to add. So, anyway, that will be the next video. We'll be working on our covers. Um, also, if you're going to keep with your original cover we can we can work on a introduction page as well so 
All right, you guys, I will see you in my next video, and I am so glad you guys are here. Uh, it means a lot to me that we can create together, and let's get get our merriness. Is it merriness? Merriness? Um, get our merrymaking happening. I don't know. That doesn't sound right either, but let's get merry. Let's get merrymaking. <laughs> All right, you guys, y'all have a super sparkly day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.